we've gotten through the kind of more of the commercial artists. Um, the next two guys I'm going to talk about would be considered more fine artists, though the line gets pretty blurry. Uh, they're narrative painters. You know, whether you're doing it for a book cover or a gallery, you're telling a story, and that's what it really comes down to. Um, so the next two guys I'm going to talk about are uh, Morgan Weisling, um, another Riley student, a student of Fred Fixler specifically, um, and even uh, uh, a one-time teacher of uh, Jeff's, I think mostly gouache painting, if, if I remember right. Uh, maybe there's some other stuff as well, but mostly gouache painting. Um, so Morgan's phenomenal. Again, his, his lighting, his staging, his everything. Again, he's one of those guys that I look at and it's like, what are you going to pick on? You know, every, everything, everything's there. It's anything that you would have a problem with would be just purely uh, subjective, just purely uh, you don't like what he paints, but how he paints it and how he composes it and how he puts it together. You know, maybe it's a little saccharine for you. I like it. Um, but it's, it's just beautiful. Everything about it is great. I think he's hitting right on the target of what he's going for. And to me, that's really what you can judge an, art, an artist by. Um, how good are their technical skills and how hard are they hitting the target that they're shooting for. You know, you can say, oh, it's, oh, it's not this. It's like, well, that's not what it's trying to be. Um, what he's trying to do is tell a little slice of American history, a little slice of American pie for everyone. Um, and he does it marvelously. Um, it would be, I would love to see a movie that looks like a Morgan Weisling painting. Um, I've, I've never seen anyone quite hit that target. Um, many of the other artists that I've mentioned, uh, Glenn Orbeck, I've seen all the movies that he was influenced by. Um, so I've seen movies that look like his paintings. Uh, uh, Chinatown, for crying out loud, pretty much looks like a walking uh, Glenn Orbeck painting. It's beautiful. It's, it's incredible to look at. Um, if uh, Phil Hale, uh, there's a movie called uh, Spider by Cronenberg. I think it's Spider. Um, by Cronenberg that, uh, with Ray Fiennes that uh, I don't know if Cronenberg was in, influenced by Phil Hale for that movie, but I'd be shocked if he wasn't because it pretty much looks like Phil Hale art directed the, the movie, which I know he didn't, but man, it looks like it. There was a couple scenes that we were watching it and if, and my wife mentioned if, if he tears off his shirt and huddles up in the corner of the room, then I, I'm going to lose my mind. And like two seconds later, Ray Fiennes tore off his shirt and huddled up in the corner of the room and it looked like a Phil Hale painting wallpaper peeling off the wall, the whole deal. It was, it, and, I, and I loved every minute of it. Um, so um, every once in a while you kind of see those influences pop up in, in people's work um, where it crosses like which one was influenced by which. Eh, difficult to say, but um, I just love when that happens. Um, so the, ne the next artist, and I think the last artist I'm going to be talking about here, um, which uh, this video has already gone on quite long, um, is John Asaro. And again, um, his work doesn't look a lot like a lot of the other artists that I've talked about. It's a lot more colorful um, than a lot of the artists I've talked about. Um, it's a lot more painterly than a lot of artists I've talked about. But his control of the human figure and his control, I know it's odd to say this about John Asaro because everyone talks about his color, but his value control is amazing. Um, and I think it's why he gets all of these colors, these strange, strange colors to work so well is because the value control is without peer. His, his values are amazing. His, his draftsmanship is amazing. And it allows him to pretty much do whatever he wants with color. Um, I often say that the best, the people that are most known for color are have amazing value control. And the people that are most known for value are actually amazing colors because the range that they're working with is so small. If you're working with very saturated color, you're going to have to work with the, with the intrinsic value of that color and make it work. And that's what they do. Or if you're or if you're a very tonal painter, your range of color that you're working with is so small, so it becomes just subtle temperature variation. Um, so it's something that I'm always kind of fascinated about. It's not like uh, a lot of colorists. It's like, well, they can't paint with value. Yeah, they can. If you the good ones, if you translate their paintings into black and white, Soroya, uh, uh, even Van Gogh, um, if you translate their stuff to black and white, it still works. It still it still holds together amazingly well. Um, and then on the other side, if you take a lot of tonalists and you ramp up their color. It still works really well. Really well. You take it into Photoshop and bump up the saturation, and it still holds together. Those subtle uh, temperature variations become extreme color harmonies. But they still work really, really well. Um, so I really don't have a, a particular uh, a favorite when, or favorite on color because I like it all. It all depends on how well you control everything else. Uh, but those are my favorite artists. Those are, again, favorite. Uh, you know, if I would lift my, list my favorite artists, it's going to be 100 artists long, and this video would be even longer. Um, but 
these are the people that have kind of influenced my work the most. And on a daily basis, they're the people that I look at to try and find direction when I feel like I'm, I'm losing it. Um, and, and I'm, I'm having a difficult time uh, holding on to my vision. These are the artists that I typically have around me that I pull out to look at to uh, sort of get me back on track when I feel like I'm, I'm drowning a little bit. Um, there's other artists, uh, that, again, the list goes on and on and on. Dean Cornwell, Mead Schaefer, Saul Tepper, uh, Salvador Dali. Uh, I mean, just so, so many artists out there um, and a lot of contemporaries out there as well that are a huge influence on me. Um, John Foster, huge influence on me. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's so many artists out there that I really enjoy their work and, and, uh, and I'm a huge fan and I wish I could do what they do, but I try to keep this down to the, you know, handful or so of artists that have really had a direct impact on my work. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was, uh, insightful. Um, but basically you just got to listen to me talk about me for about, uh, 25 minutes. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it and, uh, and got a little bit out of it and at least got exposed to maybe a couple of artists that you hadn't heard of before.